trusted by over 2,000 organizations worldwide and over half of the Fortune 100. Centrify helps strengthen your resilience with market-leading privileged access management solutions to enforce least privileged access at scale for humans and machines in the cloud and on-prem. My name is Karen Sung, and I run Centrify's major events. As a leader in PAM, we know now more than ever that privileged access management is vital to an organization's cyber defense strategy. And we know this because research shows that more than three quarters of all data breaches involve compromised access to privileged accounts. So how can PAM benefit your organization? Well, let us show you. I'd like to now introduce Jason Mitchell, our Senior Vice President of Engineering. He's going to walk us through what secure digital transformation means for you and for your organization. Jason is responsible for the research and product development of our PAM product portfolio, which includes the Vault Suite, Server Suite, and Cloud Suite. In this presentation, Jason is going to walk us through some common PAM challenges organizations are facing when moving to the cloud. We work with hundreds of customers on a daily basis, and they are constantly asking us how to solve privileged access management challenges when moving to the cloud. So Jason is going to share some of these common challenges as well as best practices and strategies you can use as you are developing your PAM practice while shifting to the cloud. All right, Jason, over to you. Thanks, Karen. Happy to be here and happy to be uh, presenting on behalf of Centrify. I'm gonna start with a couple of market trends, their implications, uh, then gonna talk about some strategies that many of our customers are using to, to develop their own PAM, PAM solutions. Uh, then we're gonna talk about some common challenges associated as customers are moving to the cloud and then summary at the end. So let's look at two trends here. One of them is on the left, Gardner says that by 2025, 80% uh, of organizations will move entirely away from on-premise IT infrastructure. That means moving to co-location, moving to hosted or moving to cloud. That's a lot of customers, uh, a lot of organizations. On the right, Sophos did a survey and, and found that in the last year, 70% of organizations experienced a cloud security breach. So with so many customers, organizations moving to the cloud and experiencing a security breach, why is that? Well, let's look at that. It, it's because the attack surface is expanding. Now, there's uh, new complexities. We used to have just on-prem infrastructure servers talking to databases with a good network perimeter with firewalls sitting around that infrastructure. Now with mobile and moving to the cloud, we're saving all of that data that, that is representing uh, big data, new methodologies of how you deploy and you manage that infrastructure, things like DevOps and new architectures and new ways of computing, serverless and containers. Uh, the access requester is moving from human to now machines and services and APIs communicating with each other. The accountability level has gone from shared accounts to now individual, in, individual identities and machine identities. Uh, and the control posture has gone from static to much more dynamic and, and AI driven and risk aware. Uh, and the authentication strength has increased, but now we also have ephemeral tokens and MFA uh, e everywhere. And then the ecosystem has gone from just servers and databases to now infrastructure as a service and DevOps and uh, containers and serverless and other ways. So it's just more complex and it's expanded, which is making it easy for uh, threat actors to get access and, uh, to these cloud infrastructure. So now let's take a step back. What does it look like to design a privileged access management solution? Well, the first thing you have to do is define your access policies. And so I'm gonna talk about some strategies and ways of thinking about how to do that. But then also as part of the practice, you have to figure out how to manage the life cycle of those policies. So how do you create one? What's the change management? How does it get deployed? How do you uh, elevate privileges how do you uh, de-elevate privileges and how do you retire that policy or change that policy later? Uh, the third thing is you have to audit everything because a, a big part of this is being able to constantly learn and adapt. 
Your environments are gonna be changing all the time. There's new threats, new things to consider. And so auditing all of that access allows you to learn from that, set up proper monitoring in place and adapt and grow your practice. So now let's talk about some of those common strategies that our customers have been using. The first is around zero trust and every, every security vendor out there at RSA is talking about zero trust and, and, and it's, it's the right thing to be talking about. But when it comes to privilege access, we can talk about zero trust. Zero trust, it used to be we had the network and the, and the firewalls and the network gave us that layer, gave us that moat around our infrastructure. That no longer exists as I talked about and so now you can't trust anything. You can't trust something that's on a server. You can't trust a specific identity. You can't trust a, a, a particular service communicating just because it's on the same VM. Uh, and so it's at every layer, every level of your implementation, you have to re-authenticate and authorize every, uh, every access to every, every secure uh, piece of information. The second strategy is around just-in-time privilege assignments. And so historically we used to have identities that had standing privileges uh, and they were static. And now what we're seeing organizations, organizations do is remove those standing privileges and elevate, give them the privileges they need at the time on demand when they're going to use, when a, a human or a service is going to use that privilege. The third strategy is around least privilege. And so that is getting more granular with your privileged access. And so that is which identities, which servers, which resources do they have access to, maybe which protocols, uh, maybe what IP address they're coming from, how, what time of day, how long to have that access, and, so, and even down to what commands can they run. So really getting more granular uh, as much as you can manage because the more granular you get, it's harder to manage, it becomes more complex, but finding that right balance uh, is, is, can be really helpful in preventing lateral movement. And then the last one is anchoring around the identity. It's, it's too hard if you try to develop your policies that are specific to the servers and then develop another set of policies specific to services and then another set that's specific to identities. You really wanna pick one place and build your entire policy set from that. And really the best place to do that is from the identity. It's the most constant, uh, it's the most constant thing it, there is. And so starting with the identity, what do they have access to? What resources, what time of day? Building it out that way is the best way to implement it. So now let's talk about some common challenges uh, that, our, that our customers have experienced as they're moving to cloud. Um, there's different groups inside of your organization that have different interests. They have their own requirements. So if you think about the infrastructure and the compliance folks, you know, they're, they're worried about how do I manage all of this IT infrastructure? How do I provision it? How do I, you know, implement the privilege access on controls that are on top of that, all the while maintaining compliance. So the, the compliance folks are saying, hey, as we're moving to the cloud and everything is changing and now we're going to DevOps, you know, how do I ensure that I'm still gonna be compliant? Then you've got your security and your identity folks who are worried about the cybersecurity risk, both from external and internal. You know, how do they implement these controls and, and, and keep the IT infrastructure protected? Then the other group is your cloud architecture and your application developers. You know, how are they gonna write the scripts to deploy this infrastructure and keep it and maintain and keep it secure? As they're moving things to, to vaults and to secret stores, you know, how, how do they make sure that all of that is implemented in one place? How do they prevent sprawl or prevent supporting multiple types or multiple instances of these secret stores? Uh, and how do you continue to provide access from both internal and external uh, uh, administrators. So now let's talk about common challenges as you, as you make that shift. Well, the first category is around additional identity providers. When you move to the cloud, you're most likely not gonna be, support AD on-premise again. And so you've probably introduced a second or even more identity providers. And now you've got the challenges associated with, with authentication. And so the first thing that came out is a while ago is it's pretty common is single sign-on and everybody's been doing that. Uh, but then you have to worry about authentication brokering between these services and between different trust networks. And so now you have federated authentication. Well, how do you ensure a consist consistent MFA of policy across all those different authentication sources and types? Uh, and then the whole shift from human to now machine-based authentication. So that is one category of challenges that our customers are facing. The second is around enabling these new ways of computing and these new architectures 
with a new methodology like DevOps. And so this is the this is you know with the inf with infrastructure as code. Now, how do you put the secrets and put the credentials, you know, embed them in there safely or or allow those scripts to get access to those credentials securely? All while maintaining regulatory compliance. You don't want the application developer knowing the production secrets. And what about the secret zero problem? So what's the, the very first service we used to put the the credentials right in the script or right in the code or the configuration file of the code. And now we've moved that out to a vault where you still need to securely access the vault to get that secret or that credential. That's the secret zero problem. Uh, and then vault sprawl that I was talking about. So if application developers are choosing the vault technology, you know, now you might have multiple uh, vendors providing different vaults, multiple instances. That just gets too complex. You need one place to manage that. Uh, and then ephemeral resources, new way, new life cycles of resources. And so instead of static, you know, manually configured servers and things, now things are spun up by a script, they're immutable and they go away quickly. Uh, and then machines and services and APIs and serverless, just, it's just more complex and the PAM solution needs to be able to accommodate these new ways of, of computing. Uh, and then you have hybrid cloud and multi-cloud. Most organizations are not just choosing one cloud provider. They're going with multiple cloud providers. So how are you going to provide a shared access policy that spans those multiple providers or one cloud provider and on-premise infrastructure? You still need auditing and monitoring uh, and it, something simple enough to manage. You can't just choose a one-off solution. So now what does this start to look like? Along the bottom is what our traditional infrastructure used to look like. So you've got some servers, uh, maybe you've got an Active Directory, uh, all protected by a network. And now you've moved to the cloud and maybe more than one cloud provider. And you've got resources up there. You've got maybe the introduction of a vault or a secret store. And then you've got VPN and a jump host to provide, give admins access into those servers. And so now what have you created? Well, you've created maybe a separate system of vaulting uh, local admin accounts. There's no enterprise directories for federated acts for federated authentication across all of them. You've now got lo local service accounts with static credentials that aren't being rotated and managed, uh, and a separate secrets management in each one of your cloud providers. Can't have consistent MFA uh, with this implementation, and possibly require a VPN to get access. So a little bit of a little bit of a challenge for admins. So this is what our solution looks like, but it doesn't have to be our solution. Any PAM solution can, can help here. And this is where you've centralized out those vaults, those secret stores into a centralized location so that, so that it makes it easier to manage and audit and monitor. And so now in this solution, you can see that they're centralized vaulting of those local admin accounts. So they're no longer there inside of those um, virtual private networks. You've now got authenticated, authentication brokering across your enterprise directory uh, a set of logins, and you've got service account management with proper authentication services that would allow for MFA, uh, and you've centralized your secret stores, and you've removed the need uh, for VPN to get access into these resources. So you've simplified a lot of things for your administrators and for your, everyone who's implementing and using the privilege access management solution. So in summary here, you know the key is simplicity. When you make things too complex, it becomes too hard. And really that's what threat actors are looking for. They're looking for the cracks in the system and the cracks in the system get exposed when it's too complex to manage. Second one there is really with simplicity, you really wanna centralize. You really want a single place for administering this access, creating these policies uh, and supporting uh, all the various uh, cloud providers, various ways uh, that, that your infrastructure is being used. And then the last thing is PAM is really, it's not a state. It's not a state of being, it's not a implement this one tool and you're done. It's really a practice. So really thinking about how are you gonna to continue to learn and evolve over time? That's a big part of any PAM solution. Karen, back to you. All right, thank you, Jason, for this very informative session. So many of our customers have platform and tooling questions. So I'd like to ask you a few questions as a, a follow-up to your presentation that I think our audience will be interested in. So Jason, uh, my first question to you is most cloud providers offer native tools. AWS, for instance, um, offers both Secrets Manager and Systems Manager. Why would I need a PAM specific solution when I can use the native tools that are provided by my current cloud provider? 
Yeah, we get this question all the time. Uh, it's a good question. Well, my first thought is, you know, if you're going with multiple clouds. So if you choose the out of the box native capabilities and in cloud provider, and they all have a secret store, a vault store and, and access control policies. But once you go with just that native provider, now how do you manage if you choose a second cloud provider? Or if you also have on premise, you know, how are you gonna have one solution that manages the access policies across both environments? That's one. The second is, while there probably are some basic use cases that can be solved with the native out of the box, just look at your full set of needs and requirements and make sure that you, know, you have a comprehensive solution in place enough to manage the, the auditing, the recording of sessions, the real-time monitoring and the behavior analytics around those sessions and make sure that you know, the solution that you pick can accommodate all of your needs given all of your different stakeholders and their interests as well. Um, interesting, as I know that a, a lot of enterprises certainly have complex requirements. So the second question I have is, do I really need a PAM solution if I'm using primarily ephemeral resources? Yeah, that's a good question. It's a common uh, misconception. Uh, ephemeral resources just mean, it, it just the life cycle of those resources is different. It's still, you still at the end of the day have services communicating with other services getting, getting access to sensitive information. Regardless of how that service was spun up, how long it exists, how it gets retired, it, that's independent. You still have to manage the privileged access and make sure that those services can communicate securely. Thanks for that clarification. Okay, so we do have one last question for you. If I'm using an identity provider like Okta or Ping, do I still need a PAM solution to securely protect my infrastructure and services? Again, this is back to looking at the requirements. While these identity providers do claim that they have some privileged access control, it's very easy to add just a little bit, make sure you consider the full range of needs and use cases to maintain your regulatory compliance that provide the right auditing and traceability that you need. Make sure you just consider the full set uh, there's a reason why over half of Fortune 100 companies have chosen Centrify. We're familiar with enterprise use cases and can meet all of those needs. And over half of the Fortune 100 customers have chosen us to provide that privilege access management for them. Thanks, Jason. Makes total sense. You know, I guess if uh, over half of the Fortune 100 customers trust our PAM solution, then we must be doing something right, right? Yep. Uh, all right. Well, that's going to conclude our session for today. Thanks everyone and thank you so much for your time. And if you're interested in learning more about our products and solutions, please do reach out to us at www.centrify.com. Bye everyone and have a great conference.